What we're going to talk about here is equivalence between extensive form games and normal form games. And so going from an extensive form game to a normal form game, as I'll do after I've had this little discussion, is always possible. It is always possible to get a normal form game from an extensive form game. And that's fantastic because that means anything we can represent as an extensive form game, we can also represent as a normal form game. And that normal form game, we can study using all the tools we've talked about in the previous videos. The way to think about this, however, is importantly to discuss what is a strategy. And a strategy in an extensive form game is something that maps information sets to actions. And so you can think of a strategy in um, uh, an extensive form game as a vector where the indices of that vector, what is at each position in that vector, corresponds to an information set. And so the indices of your vector, the information set, and the entries in your vector will be the actions to take at that information set. So we'll illustrate this with a couple of examples. Um, and so the, um, the full set of strategies available to Alice in, in this game here are to either pick sports, at uh, the single uh, information set that Alice has, or to pick comedy. Now, these are the only information sets that exist. There's only one information set, and every information set has, um, has two actions. And so there are two strategies available to uh, Alice, which are to at A pick sports or at A pick comedy. Notice how I'm saying at A do something, that's a mapping from an information set to an action. And once we've done this, what we can do is say, well, this is going to be our new action set. So this is going to be the action set for Alice, is the strategy that always picks sports or the strategy that always picks comedy. And what we can do then for um, uh, the other player is say, okay, what are the strategies that are available to Bob, well, in this extensive form game, Bob could always choose sports. That means at this information set, choose sports, and at this information set, choose sports. And the way we'd write that down is we'd say that is sports and sports. Where now a single strategy for Bob is a vector indexed by the information set. We can say the first entry corresponds to the first information set and the second entry, the second information set. And the, and the entries of, that in, of this vector are the actions to be taken. So this is one of them. Another one is that at B1, we choose sports. And at B2, we choose comedy. Another one is that at B1, we choose comedy. And at uh, B2, we choose sports. And finally, there is that we always choose comedy. And so these four strategies, these four strategies available uh, to Bob correspond to our action set for the second player. In the extensive form, the normal form game, I'm about to write down because now we can use the, the definition we know for an ex for a normal form game, which is number of players, we've got two of them, action sets available to the players. This is the action set for one of the players. This is the action set for another one of the players. And then mappings from uh, the cross product of our action sets to utilities can be given by, um, by essentially reading off this game. I just scoot that, uh, how should I do this? Make this a little bit smaller, perhaps. I probably should have done that to start with. Um, and so now we can say, all right, in this case, we have the game, the matrix A for the row player, which has two rows, and the rows are gonna to correspond to these two uh, actions, and it has four columns, where the four columns correspond to these four things. And the matrix B is gonna be the utilities of the column player with the same uh, things. And we essentially look them up. So <clears throat> when we have 
uh, sports going against sports and sports, we uh, have a utility uh, three, two. So the first player gets three, the second player gets two. And we can just go through and realize that we're gonna have a few repeats. Uh, three, two, one, 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 one. Whereas for example, this entry here corresponds to the whole first row, I should say. The whole first row corresponds to the first player choosing sports. Uh, and the fourth column corresponds to the second player choosing comedy. And indeed, both players get one. And then the other entries will be um, 0, 2, 0, 2, and 0, 3, 0, 3. And from this point on, we can use everything we've done to study this quite well defined and compact form that corresponds to the extensive form game. And now if we take a look at this second game, so let me just uh, tidy up things a little bit here. If we take a look at the second game, we have the same action sets for uh, player one, which are, they always choose sports or they always choose comedy. But now our strategies for player two, for Bob, for, for Bob are going to actually be a bit simpler because we have a single information set that contains B1 and B2. And so the, ve the vector that is going to correspond to the strategies will only contain one element, which is exactly what Alice has. And so the strategies are for Bob, when you're in this information set, choose sports, or when you're in this information set, choose comedy. Bob does not know <clears throat> the difference. Oops, sorry, I realize I'm slightly off the page there. And if we do that and do the exact same uh, uh, process, we actually end up with the same game we had before, which is A equals 3102. And I might say before, I mean the original like, uh, normal form game that we've been using uh, as a counterexample, so to speak, in 2, 1, 0, 3. Note that this is a two by two game because we have two rows and two columns corresponding to the size of our information sets.